Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Joining you from the office because work is going on at the house. So that's why we're here today. It's a cloudy day. It's going to be a cool weekend. I'm looking forward to it. You know, the beginning of fall clearly is happening. Kind of. Ish. Anyway, as we always do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may, by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Great. Good times. Note, no coffee on Monday, because it's Miner's Day, and we have other coffee that we're doing, lots of coffee, lots of coffee in real life in the early morning. And other than that, you know, that's going on, keeping going. All right, so a couple things to cover today. Tomorrow is the feast day of St. Gregory the Great, Pope St. Gregory the Great. And we should definitely talk about him a little bit at some point. So let's just say that's going to be today. And also a couple other things too. September is the month of Our Lady of Sorrows. And I think that this is a very important theme and one that I'm going to be talking about kind of a lot for the next couple of weeks coming up to the feast day of Our Lady of Sorrows, to say nothing of a couple other things which happen in September, which are pretty cool. All right, as we always do, let's just dig in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, on the subject of fraternal charity, you have no need for anyone to write you. For you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. Indeed, you do this for all the brothers through Macedonia. Nevertheless, we urge you, brothers and sisters, to progress even more and to aspire to live a tranquil life, to mind your own affairs, and to work with your own hands as we instructed you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. Let the sea and what fills it resound, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, the mountains shout with joy for shout with them for joy. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He will rule the world with justice and the peoples with equity. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. Alleluia, alleluia. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey 
called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately, the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole on the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is the end of the Gospel of Matthew in terms of the lectionary cycle for the weekdays that we're in right now. There's a little bit more of Matthew before we get to the Passion. It will goes on just a, four, a few more verses. It's not that long. The next part, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him and he will separate them from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And so on. <laughs> and then starts the passion of the Lord. The apocalyptic aspect of the gospel in this part that we've been reading now for the last week is pretty clear. This woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites of earlier in the week, the stay awake of Thursday, the 10 virgins of yesterday, today, the talents, and finally, the judgment before going into the passion. It's not just because it's the end of the gospel, but um, does have this kind of you know, wonderful quality that is pretty intense and a little bit scary. Nothing to be scared of, though. And, and that's really kind of the point of why we read it over and over again, that we really should not be ashamed or shocked or otherwise perturbed by this message, but instead remain rather faithful. If anything, what we hear uh, St. Paul telling the Thessalonians is pretty clear of remain tranquil, stop worrying about other people's business, actually deal with yourself. Honestly, a lot of insecurities in the world are out there. I mean, you know, in people, and they like to share them with others and kind of foist them on others. And that just has nothing to do with uh, the, 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 the ethos of the Christian life, which hopefully it is that we follow. The meaning of all of these things, yes, we must take it seriously. and We must constantly be you know, called to conversion. But at the same time, there's also a very important part of being actually astutely aware of what it is in our lives and what it is that we are doing. I mentioned that we should talk a little bit about Pope St. Gregory the Great. This is his feast day tomorrow that we celebrate. 
it's kind of one of the feast days. It's one of the days you could. It's the anniversary of him becoming Pope, actually. Back in, you know, the, 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 the sixth century is a while ago. This is not a recent thing. But Pope St. Gregory the Great is kind of one of these very important figures who does a lot of things. First of all, uh, we talk about the evangelization of the English-speaking world. Not really, because at that point, they really weren't speaking English, but certainly of Anglia, that is to say, of that area in the north. He wanted to do it. Uh, the people of Rome said no. <laughs> and when he was trying to leave, they pulled him back real fast. They, they actually went and, you know, captured him and then made him pope you know that's not quite exactly how the history goes but it kind of is and it was only after he became pope that he sent to his best friend a guy named augustine and then augustine went to canterbury and the rest of it is history again not exactly the kind of the story but very very importantly so, so pope saint gregory the great had this wonderful intuition which was to long before he was Pope, he, he got together with his friends, they all moved into his mother's house, they made a monastery out of it. And that became the beginning of a very, really cool era in the kind of the spiritual life of the church. So much so that Gregory is remembered for a number of things, and especially for his writings, his treatises on uh, for example, the, the morals in Job, that's what it's called, but honestly, a kind of a way of reading scripture is what it is. Also, his pastoral rule, spectacular. The life of various saints, for example, Saint Benedict is all very much because Gregory has told us this. And a number of other things, too. The influence that Gregory had on the church was undeniable. And I think that a very important part of that is because he was so well formed by his friends in this monastic experience of what they were doing at his mother's house. I, I, I can't emphasize that enough, that it was not some kind of other place that they went, but they really all kind of, you know, made what made something better with what they had. They had a lot to begin with. This is also very true, but it was a very special, very special thing that happened there. And so we rightfully remember Pope St. Gregory the Great with many reasons to do so. Hey, Rachel, did you ever get the thing? Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, in that case, as we always do, let's bring our prayers before the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father's prayer intention this month, that those persons living on the margins of society in inhumane conditions may not be overlooked by institutions and never considered of lesser importance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we may grow ever closer to Christ, meditating on the sorrows of his mother. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who take their blessings for granted, that they be blessed with generosity of spirit and seek to live a life of thanksgiving. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have vowed themselves to God, that with his help they may faithfully keep to their resolve and listen to the movement of his spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And Kenneth asks us to pray for the good health of Father. Ervin Garcia, and continuous recovery of Dr. Um, Ramon Dixon. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love, through the intercession of Pope St. Gregory, endow, we pray, with a spirit of wisdom, those to whom you have given authority to govern, that the flourishing of a holy flock may become the eternal joy of the shepherds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
great. And may the blessing of Almighty God be with you always, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Cool. Happy Saturday. Let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor, banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Fantastic. Everyone, have a lovely Saturday, and we'll see you again tomorrow. All right. God bless. Bye-bye.